Hello, and welcome back to our 2023 Run Alternative Streamathon. I am Elizabeth, or Isabeth. Um, I will be running Blades in the Dark for you guys tonight. Um, you can catch me here every Sunday and every other Wednesday and Friday for Light Clockwork, Power Rangers, Centurion, and Wall of the Worlds. And I just realized that I am in each one of those games with two of you. <laughs> um so before we get into it i'm gonna let all of my players introduce themselves um so who are you who are you playing tonight and where else can we find you um i'm gonna start above me with ava all right i am ava rogers if you've been around rem for uh any the last three years you probably know me either my face or my voice if you listen to the podcast um, you can find me here on Monday nights for a uh, the Paranormal Albany, a Dresden Files game. Every other Wednesday, the opposite Wednesdays to Elizabeth, as I'm part of the. Uh, oh no, wait, that's not here. That's on. That's been moved over to <clears throat> the Shadow. Oh my God. Or Shadowcaster. Yeah, you should Shadow do that because Network. I Thank still you. do. I still do ads for it, so you should. You should still. Be okay. Able to, still totally <laughs> yeah, you it. can find me there on every other Wednesday night and every other Friday here on this Twitch channel with Elizabeth and Grim, uh, for the Well of the Worlds game. Um, I'm also producer for the Alternia Archives podcast. And did I say crowdfunding director? I am the crowdfunding director. So all of the Kickstarters you see us promote, I'm behind most of that. Other than the promoting, just putting it together and running it. <laughs> and who are you playing today? Running. Oh, yes. Um, I am playing a Whisper by name of Cyrene Vale, better known as Silvertongue. And from there, we're going to go over to Danny. Hello, good evening, everybody. I am Danny. I am on social media here and there as Cobblesworth. I am the dungeon master for Sunday's stream, uh, weekly stream, like Clockwork, with um, uh, right here on Master of Rem. Uh, that is a game that I run uh, for Elizabeth and John, uh, amongst others. And I also do some streaming on uh, some other in some other locations. And uh, tonight I am playing Winifred, who goes by Fred. I am allowed to use Fred for this character because this is not an NPC. So uh, don't at me, Sammy. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is the same character I played last year. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of behind the scenes continuity, I guess. But uh, Fred is a lurk, and uh, that means that. She is all about being sneaky and getting in and out of places without being seen, or maybe being seen, but then disappearing into the darkness. And that's me. Thank you. Uh, and then we're going to go to Grimnack. Hi, I'm Grimnack. Uh, I am here uh, on Wednesdays and Fridays, every other Wednesday, every other Friday, playing in Power Rangers Centurion Ridge. <laughs> And in Wall of the Worlds, uh, go figure. Uh, every Tuesday, I'm on Luke's G Variety. We switch between Power Rangers, where I get a chance to actually play with Elizabeth. And then on the opposite Tuesdays, we're playing uh, Fallout. Uh, and I am playing one of the most naive um, Fall Dwellers you may ever meet. And it's kind of fun. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what we've got in store. I am playing uh, Francis Tobias Van Dellinger the Fifth, also known as Blitz. Please just call him Blitz. Um, he's a hunter. Uh, he's really good with swords and guns. And while he's got a rifle, he only takes it out on certain missions. Um, he's kind of the self-proclaimed muscle. Uh, that's generally his biggest solution is violence. Um, well. The question, the answer is always violence. The question is, what what solves your problems? Um, but that's it for me. And John, I like violence. I don't have anything against violence. I'm very excited to have violence uh, in this dystopia. Um, no, hello everyone. I'm John McDonald, aka Panabon, on Sunday nights, aka Panajon, when I'm doing Gen Con TV or Rules of Cool. Uh, sometimes on Thursday, pinch hinting for Master of Rem. Um, 
Sometimes I'm Zordon, if you're listening to Becoming Mighty and Morphin in the Alternate Archives, which you should be listening to the Alternate Archives because there's a new episode every Friday, and currently we are playing Deadlands, which I'm enjoying listening to a lot. Um, Max, who is our tech and who was in the Power Ranger stream earlier today, uh, is the Marshall slash GM for that, so I've been having a great time learning about uh, Deadlands. Um, this upcoming Wednesday is a Power Rangers Century on Wednesday, so if you're in it for Power Rangers Century on All the Worlds, this is an upcoming week for that. Uh, you want to be part of that, because uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm doing other stuff outside of this. Everything is gay, even the straight stuff is my uh, pop culture podcast with my friend Magnus. Uh, we're doing Halloween month in May. We're doing Musical Horror Madness Month for May. It was a mouthful, and it's really hard to say, but I'm very excited about it. Um, and of course, I am quite famously was accepted into an MFA program, and I'm doing a baked good raffle on Sunday night after like clockwork is over, because uh, the internet will spin the wheel, and then the winner will get a baked good mailed to them. Uh, so you still have chances to enter that if you'd like to come be part of the Discord if you want to find out how to enter that, because... Um, we want you as part of the family. We're a community here, and I'm very excited to be part of this community. Um, I am playing, I'm very excited also to play in my first game with uh, Isabeth's doing Blades in the Dark. I've been wanting to do this uh, since I found out Isabeth is the master of Blades in the Dark. Um, I would I'm playing, that far. Well, I'm, I'm playing uh, Dr. Beekman, who is a leech uh, slash mad scientist, and I want to blow things up with my little mice. Yes, it is that Dr. Beekman was the inspiration for this character, and if my voice starts to go as I can hear it, it's because I've been inhaling a lot of toxic fumes as I've been tearing away. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Let's have some good times! I do have to say, I'm very disappointed that you went with Beaky for... Or Beaky for your your alias instead of Boom Boom. I was really looking forward to calling you Boom Boom all night. You can call me Boom Boom. I go by many <laughs> names. You can totally okay. call me Boom Boom. Okay, I think I might. Um, all right, so before we get into the game, um, there are a couple of things to go over. The first is um, our giveaways. We are doing two tonight. Um, we are either going to have one or two winners. It depends on how many people enter. So everybody enter. Um, the first giveaway is a PDF copy of Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition. So thank you, Mobius Worlds, for that. Uh, the second is my own personal uh, Blades in the Dark dice set from Norse Foundry. And it comes with, I have, um, yeah, they're really, really nice. They're really heavy. Um, I don't know if you can see them, but they're super nice. Um, and I got, actually, John sent me a link um, to an Etsy page. It was 88 Riddles on Etsy for a uh, Blades in the Dark dice crypt. I don't know if you can see it because my background is um, blurred, but hold on, let me let me fix that. I got it. It's on the layout. It is on the layout. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, thank you, Thomas. Um, so yeah, it's this nice little coffin that you can put so the cool. the dice in. Let me see if I can do this without spilling heavy dice all over my keyboard. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna give that away to a lucky winner. Um, you can enter to win in a couple different ways. Uh, type hashtag RunPC for in the chat. In the Twitch chat for one entry. Uh, donate 100 bits for one entry. And uh, John and I made the command decision earlier for every 100 bits that you donate, you get an entry. And subscribing gets you seven entries. And I also made the command decision earlier. If you gift a sub, you and the person that you gift the sub to both get seven entries. So everybody enter to win. Uh, we'll announce the winners at the end of the game, and you must be present to win. Uh, I will message you on Twitch if I don't know you. If I do know you, I will bother you on Discord. Uh, so either way, look for a message from Isabeth. Um, don't forget to join our community on Discord and follow us on social media. And hopefully somebody can put the links in the chat for me because I don't pay attention to chat when I'm running the game. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, a couple other things before we start. Um, if you are familiar with Blades in the Dark before, or Blades in the Dark. Um, players typically keep track of their XP at the end of the session. Since this is a one-shot, the players can track their XP in real time as they gain it. Uh, so if you guys manage to gain enough XP to get an extra skill or something, feel free. 
Uh, also, I'm allowing crafting during flashbacks instead of making it just a downtime activity. Uh, you still have to roll to see if you succeed in whatever it is you're trying to do, but you can at least try. Um, everybody should have coin on their sheets, um, but you really won't need it in Blades in the Dark if you're not familiar with it. Um, anything that you would just kind of spend a couple silver on, so like if you're just buying around at the tavern or something like that, it's just assumed that you have that and it doesn't take away from your wealth. If you're going to like spend a coin to bribe somebody, that will take it off your sheet, but if you're not going to do that, you don't really have to worry about keeping track of your money. Um, and then I was telling the players earlier, I am going to run this a little bit differently than I have in the past. Um, we are going to just jump right into it tonight, and, uh, and then we're going to backtrack and rewind and give the players a chance to kind of see what led up to that moment and give them a chance to kind of plan. And then uh, we'll jump back in and see how they go about resolving the issue that they have. Do any of the players have any questions? For yes. Um, you know what? I will say sure. Um, we will do uh, a copper gift. We'll give them an extra dice on a roll. Um, we will say a silver gift will, hmm, a silver gift will let them re-roll their dice. Uh, and a gold gift, um, will, Oh, I don't want to do that. I was going to say a gold gift could just be an automatic six, but I I, I don't want everybody to be flooded with <laughs> gold <laughs> gifts. <laughs> um, I'm going to say a gold gift is the donor's choice. You can give the player either an extra dice or two on a roll, um, or you can give them... Um, What was the second thing I said? Oh, you or you can tell them they can just re-roll their, their, their dice. So if somebody gets a one and you want to help them out and give them a re-roll, you can give them a silver or a gold gift. Unless the players can think of a better better idea for the gold. I mean, how about reducing the effect of a consequence? We could do that. Or I was going to say you could do a bump. if you uh, So oh. for the gold, it would bump like a fail to... Uh, four or five complication and then a complication to a success then, but. or yeah. uh i also have an idea um okay. i would thinking about it now what i would do is copper would in either increase the effectiveness okay um is what i'm thinking and then you go extra die with the silver and re-roll with a gold or switch the gold and silver or yeah okay yeah let's is do what that i would do let's do that what ava said so, copper is... Are you keeping track, Ava? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you, because I won't remember. Copper's not reducing anything. It's increasing the effectiveness. Uh, well, while that's happening, I do have a question. Yes. How much of this is my fault? How much of All what of is it. your fault? How, I, well, I don't know what we're going into, but, I mean, if I made a hole in a wall that didn't have one before I have to think potentially I have some culpability in this matter. You it's know what? It fault. is <laughs> it's always John's fault. Um it is none of this is your fault. Yay, none of this is your makes... fault alone. That does not make me feel better, but that's fine. <laughs> that's what the exploding mice are for. All right, any other questions from the players or chat? Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, we are going to start in a smallish, dimly lit room. Uh, there are three doors in this room, two of which are locked. The third door is unlocked but closed. Uh, there is a window. It has bars on the outside, and on the inside, it is boarded up, but uh, it looks like it's been boarded up for a very long time, and the wood itself is kind of worn and chipped, and that's kind of how you can see there's bars on the outside. 
Um, there's a worn desk and bookcase in the room. And the room itself smells musty, like it's been shut up for a while. Uh, there's a safe in the corner of the room, and Fred is kneeling down in front of the safe. Um, now, I know you guys don't know where you are or <laughs> why you're here, um, but for the other three players, um, is there anything the three of you want to do inside this room? We're not going to leave yet. We're going to stay here. Is there anything you guys want to do? Uh, did we come in through the unlocked but closed door? You don't know. I don't know, huh? You don't know yet. Okay. You can assume, uh, I will say, I will say you can probably assume that you came in through the unlocked door, but that may change once we, once you guys start your plan. That's why we're staying in here for right now. Okay, but there's a so. desk, there's a bookcase, there's a boarded up window. Is there anything you guys want to look at? Oh, Silvertongue like is definitely looking over the books in the in the bookcase. Okay. Um, the books are, uh, they range from uh, herbalism books, uh, books on uh, potion making, um, spark craft books, uh, books on spirits and how to trap spirits. There's just a bunch of dusty books on this bookshelf on a wide a range of topics. What's going on with the desk? Okay. Um, there is a journal on the desk. Mm. Is it an important journal? I don't know. Do you want to look through it? I always. Okay. Um, flipping through the journal, um, it does... The desk itself does look like it's not as dusty as like the bookcases, so it does look like it's somebody's been sitting here recently-ish. Um, flipping through the journal, um, the handwriting is really bad, so you can only make out certain bits of it. Um, but it talks about um, being too old, um, needing to find a solution to a problem, um, having an idea but trying to figure out how how am i going to make this reality i need to figure this out um all of my other ideas haven't panned out i really need to i need to find something i need to find some way to make this work um and then um towards the back of the book uh it says something about getting close to a solution but it doesn't specify what the solution is or what the problem was yes this is worse than when Melissa when Melissa started to do uh, in home exorcisms. Ugh, nothing here. I'm Any... keeping watch on the door with my blades drawn. Okay. All right. So fresh in the dark by any chance? I mean, it is dim in here, so yes. Um. Is it? Is there light streaming in through the cracks in the window? Is it? Is it? Uh, are we in a place where there's it's lit up uh, outside? Uh, obviously not sunlight, but um, but there like, is there's yeah. some yeah there's some light coming in from the cracks in the board, um, and then there are uh, there's like one on either side of the room. There's a um, not a candelabra, but like a what's the word I'm looking for? Sconce. Sconce. Thank you. Um, there's a sconce on either side, um, but the light coming from it is is fairly dim. It's bright enough that you can kind of see around the room, um, but it's not so bright that you can, like, see everything, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Fred, you are kneeling down in front of this safe. Um, the first thing that you notice is that you don't actually have to break into this safe. It's already unlocked. Mm -hmm. Um, the door isn't open, but it's ajar enough that you can see that it is unlocked. Um, now, you know, whatever it is that you were here for is in this, it's supposed to be in the safe. Um, so you are kneeling down in front of the safe and you have your hands on the safe door. Um, do you tell everybody else that the safe was unlocked or do you keep that to yourself? Yeah, as, um, as, uh, as I just look at uh, look look dolefully at my my lock picks uh, and then I slide them away and I say, yeah, 
Uh, someone's opened the safe already? Uh, and then I'm going to open it just to make sure that it is empty as I suspect it will be. Okay. As you start to pull open this door, when you get it just open enough that you can kind of peek inside, an alarm rings out. Now, you know you only have so long before someone comes to investigate this, um, and you don't actually know if it was the trigger, the opening of the safe was tr is the one that's triggering, triggering the alarm, or if the alarm was triggered elsewhere, and it's just a really weird coincidence. So, you guys are in this room, and alarm's going off. What are your thoughts? I would like to uh, study this um, the safe and see if I can find any sort of device or anything attached to see if it is the source of the alarm. Okay. Roll me. Actually, you tell me. What do you want to roll for that? Well, I'm going to roll study. Okay. Um, I am thinking that uh, I'm not like in a super rush. I feel pretty confident about our door, our door guard. Okay. Um, and so I feel like I'm going to take my time and, and try to push that to a controlled role, but uh, I don't know what the effect would be. If it'll be standard, limited, great. Let's do, yeah, we'll just do standard. That's fine. Okay, and it's controlled all right then? Yeah. Excellent. All right. I fail. Okay. Um, but... So, yeah, you cannot quite tell um, if the alarm, if the, uh, the safe was uh, triggered. Hold on. Words are hard. Um, you cannot tell if um, the safe was rigged with an alarm. Um, and with the alarm ringing out, you can't really tell if it's actually coming from the safe. It's just, it's really loud and it kind of sounds like it's all over. Um, but this is actually where we're going to pause and we're going to rewind. Um, now, I am going to let you guys decide how far back we go. Um, within reason, we're not going to like go back two years. <laughs> my question, <laughs> my question to you while you're trying to decide is, how long do you think it would take you to prep for a job that you maybe aren't one hundred percent skilled to do? Assuming there's no time frame, we're, like where it's a tight time frame, and it's just sure. it needs to be done. Uh, I would probably say approach it cautiously in at least six months. There is like a there isn't a strict time limit, um, but I'm gonna say they would want this job done within two months. Okay. I was gonna say a month to three, so. So at least so six weeks. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? Six weeks sounds fine to me. Okay. I can craft right. many deadly electronic mice in six weeks. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to rewind six weeks. Um, now, you guys are a cult. Um, what did you guys decide to name your cult? Well, since I'm the one that came up with the name, we are the Revivalists of the Triumvirate, or the Revivalists for short. Okay. I keep telling you I can't say the word Triumvirate <laughs> and take myself seriously. Why do you have to keep adding words to it? It feels like every time I ask, we have a new word for this cult. It's a common enough word for cults. It's a hard word. There's too many consonants. <laughs> All right. So you guys uh, worship Kotar. Uh, Kotar was said to have either been a powerful sorcerer, a demon, a god. It really depends on what books you've read. Uh, certain tomes will refer to him or her as different, different things. 
um, Kotar was said to have been mummified before the cataclysm. Uh, but as far as anyone can tell, his or her remains have never been found. Um, it is said that the eye, the hand, and the heart of Kotar possess great power for whomever is brave enough and stupid enough to seek them out and use them. Um, each one is supposed to have great power alone, but if you are able to find all three and use them together, you will have just unimaginable power. Um, again, these are just rumors. Nobody has ever actually found them. No one has ever actually found the body. Um, the one thing the tomes do agree on is that these particular pieces were said were scattered um, in hopes that no one, if somebody found one, they would at least not be able to find all three. Um, I have left it up to you guys to decide what you believe, um, whether it is an individual belief or a group belief. So what did you guys decide? I don't believe we've talked about it out of character. Okay. So individually then, um, what do you think your character would believe? Silver Tongue 100% believes they're a demon. Okay. And is Silver Tongue okay with worshipping the demon? Oh, yes. Okay. Just making sure. In fact, that might have something to do with how Satara became her enemy. Satara is another demon. Possibly. What about everybody else? Blitz is in the belief that Kotar is a god. A demon that, even if it had been mummified, if it was broken into pieces, wouldn't be able to keep its form forever. And if he was, he or she was a sorcerer, again, a human's magic only goes so far. Um, and his goal, which he has not told anybody in the cult, is to collect all three pieces in an attempt to revive his deity. Okay. Fred's just here for the coffee cake, man. Um, but uh, <laughs> but but Fred's very very open to either of these either of these theories and kind of vacillates between them. Like sometimes uh, Fred is is listening with rapt attention to how uh, Kotor Katar is a demon that will. Uh, through worshiping will give us power or whatever it is that um, that is supposedly promised. And sometimes, uh, you know, it makes sense to me that that they're a god, a deity. And uh, and I kind of play, I kind of switch that up just to kind of keep things lively between the two uh, individuals. Okay. And what does Boom Boom believe? Uh, boom Boom believes in things going boom. Um, one of the drawbacks to Dr. Beekman is that they're they're not morally opposed to alchemy and spiritualism. After all, they craft tiny explosive knives that have spirit veins in them. Uh, but really, I'm here for the hand, and I'm assuming that it's a hand that's going to make things explode. And so I'm here for the hand. And I've heard about the hand. Don't I, I eyeballs and hearts and brains they don't really do anything for me. I'm trying to reanimate a corpse here, so you're like, yeah, Kotar, whatever you're gonna do to get me closer to the goal of making things explode, hey, I'm all here for it. All right, um, in the journals tab in Foundry, there is a, a lore journal, and I did add a little bit extra lore on Kotar, um, that we can go over if you guys want. Um, lore. It's not a lot, so don't don't like expect a book, but it's enough um, that you guys will at least uh, have an idea of some names and whatnot as we go forward. Um, I think I went to college with him. <laughs> um. All right, now, um, do you think either individually or as a group, um? Do you think that you would have had any dealings with the Circle of Flame? Uh, just so you know, the Circle of Flame is supposed to be a secret society, um, but it is made up of scholars. Uh, they have an extensive library um, that catalogs a lot of the arcane artifacts and valuable treasures that disappeared when the Lost District was abandoned outside the Lightning Ring. Um, 
so if you were looking for ancient tomes on a god or a demon, um, this would be a place that you could go to try to find the to find that. I think Fred has heard rumors and whispers. Um, any any time you tell me about someone who's got ancient valuable stuff just kind of lying around somewhere that always kind of piques her attention a little bit but um but nothing concrete okay i think silver tongue has had contact with them okay what about the other two um blitz probably would not have had okay. contact with them directly um at least not unless somebody else took him along as a bodyguard. Fair enough. So, funny story. Um, they were having like a secret society meeting at some point, and there there was an adjacent wall, and the wall might have gotten a crack in it, and Lumi might have overheard something they didn't intend to. So it's not so much that. Boom Boom knows about them. It's that they kind of mutually know about each other, even though details are very scarce. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. So, uh, when you guys aren't doing weird culty things, what are you doing? And I'm. I don't mean necessarily vice indulgent activities. Like, what's a normal day for you? For each of you, like, what district do you hang out in? What kind of things do you do? Do you have like a day job that you go to? That sort of thing. Uh, I have an ongoing nemesis, actually. Uh, I have, um, actually, I wrote this down. So I run a, um, I am, uh, I run a, a thing called, uh, a place called Beaky's Happy Home Helpers, uh, which are little electronic things that you can buy for your home to help uh, do chores and stuff around your home. Not like full, like, robot Tin Men bionic stuff, but like, you know, little things to help clean about, like uh, proto Roombas. Um, and I'm in a weird battle with my rival, Melissa, who is a priestess who has opened up a shop next door that reanimates and gives people undead servants. And it's like a conflict of businesses, so there's like a rivalry between us going on. So that is where you spend your days? When you're not doing uh, your as far as, as far as Melissa knows, I also definitely don't try to destroy the walls of Melissa's shop every now and then. What about Fred? Fred, uh, Fred spends their days kind of just lounging about uh, and just being a layabout. Uh, I don't really you know, when I need to eat, I take what I need from a fruit stand or uh, or some other location. Um, you know, I only pay for food when it's something special. Um, and uh, and I just keep my ear to the ground for rumors of anything interesting because I do uh, love to uh, unravel the threads surrounding any fun supernatural mystery and so i'm always just kind of looking for that in fact that's kind of what in a roundabout way led me uh led me here that and the coffee cakes of course of course what about silver tongue silver tongue spends a lot of her time at i can't remember if it's charter hall university or dust Ball academy that would be where she attended, uh, probably Charter Hall University. Um, it's either there, like pouring through every single book that the library has for any, yeah, literally any scrap of information she can find. Um, or she also spends time with Quellen, who was a fellow student when she did attend there, um, who now I think has a shop. Okay. She's a witch, so they get along really well. Okay. What about Blitz? Uh, he spends his days at the dock, essentially working as a day laborer, just to okay. kind of keep his, his muscles up in a way that's not uh, 
going to be obvious. Uh, it also gives him a chance to kind of, you know, hear rumors about stuff being smuggled in, um, see what's going out in the Great Ocean, which is where he spent a lot of his uh, years before joining the cult. Um, so, you know, it kind of gives him that old c connection to his old life without actually having to go back to it. Um, I am going to need each of you to pick a number between one and a hundred. Um, nobody can have the same number, and let me know what each what each of you pick. I'm an adult, I'm so I pick six nine. What was that? I'm an adult, so I pick sixty nine. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Twenty seven. All right. Friend blitz. Forty two. Okay. Ninety nine. All right. Give me one second. Thank you for not asking me the velocity of a unladen swallow. Oh, right. oh I hate the private rolls. <laughs> okay, so... That was a lot of dice that sounded in my ear right then. All right, so silver tongue. Uh-huh. It is about, let's say, 2.30 in the afternoon. Would you be at the university, or would you be with your friend, or would you be, like, headed to your friend's house, or to your friend's shop? Where, where, are, you, where are you going? Where are you? I feel like at this time, um, she and Quillen are probably having, like, a late lunch. Okay. Where? What district are you in? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> um, let's. Move. It doesn't really matter. It's just random. It's just for flavor. Uh, let's just charter hall somewhere. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, so you are in Charter Hall with your friend. Um, you were running a little late to lunch. Uh, you got caught up in the library. You found a book that you found fascinating. Um, so you are rushing to make lunch with your friend. Um, I want you, and I'm going to let you pick what you want. If you can convince me why you think this would be what, what you're what you would use, I'm down for it. Mm -hmm. um, something, it's essentially a perception check. Um, mm -hmm. I want to know, I just want to know how much you're noticing as you're going by. Um, it's standard. Um, no compl There's no complications if you roll badly. It's just going to tell me how much you see around you as you're doing. Okay. Um, I want to say resolve just because that's my best skill, but it doesn't White doesn't quite fit, so I'll just go with the survey. Okay. Uh, so no modifier, just roll. Yep. Yep. Control standard. <laughs> <laughs> I see nothing. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> maybe she's borrowed the book and is still like like. As she's walking. Also, I kind of want to describe Silver Tongue at this yeah. point. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Go ahead. I forgot because Silver Tongue's oh. Tiger Rosi. Oh. Uh, so she's, I think they say demon blooded is what they believe. It is. Um. So she's pretty slim and a, a petite woman. Um. Fair complexion, but her eyes are just pure black orbs. No sclera, no nothing, just pure black. And her hair is bone white. Um, all right, so you are reading your book. You are rushing through the streets. You get to lunch. You have a delightful lunch with your friend. Um, later on that evening, you are back at your lair. Um... And as you are now, do you have like, 
like a like a messenger bag or something that you keep your books in or like yes okay um as you are kind of cleaning out your you're pulling the books out of your bag you notice a note uh, it reads um i know what you're looking for i have information for a price meet me in Foggrest on wizard's way the gallery top floor overlooking tangletown 5 p.m tomorrow Okie dokie. She will uh, read the note. And promptly burn it after she's read it and memorized it and has mentally put that in her calendar. <laughs> okay. Are you telling the rest of your group? No. Okay. Um... Right. Two thirty afternoon. Oh. Where is Fred? Uh, waking up. Um. Okay. Uh, it's probably time to get something to eat, I think. Okay. I'm Where would you head out and, Well, you know. Um, probably gonna head out to some place in the Crow's Foot. It's got a good blend of just stuff from everywhere and all around. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna head over to the Crow's Foot. Okay. Um, and just see what's uh, going on. Alrighty. Um, I am gonna need you to roll me whatever it is that you would like to roll that will tell me what you are noticing around you. Um, sure. And the same thing, controlled standard. I'm going to uh. I'm going to use Prowl for this, uh, okay. just because I like to just kind of stay to the sides of of the crowds. I don't like to be in it, but that affords me usually a little bit of time to really kind of get a sense of what's going on around. So, okay. just a standard risky standard. Yep. yep. It doesn't even need to be risky. It can be, or it can be risky. That's fine. Okay. okay. Well. Um, I I noticed something. You do something notice something. Back. It does. You, um, so as you are kind of just in the shadows and you're you're looking around, um, you get kind of fixated across the way. Um, it, you see, it's two people there. They just kind of look sketchy. They look like they're doing like a a handoff almost. Um, and as you're watching to see kind of what's going on, you feel something brush against you. And when you go to turn to look, you see a young boy kind of scampering away. Um, and you kind of instinctively feel for your coin that you have on you. Uh, and instead you find a note in your pocket. And it says the same thing. Uh, I know what you're looking for. I have information for a price. Meet me in Fog Foncrest um, on Wizard's Way Gallery, top floor overlooking Tangletown, 5 p.m. tomorrow. Hmm. You win this one, little boy. I will commit most of that to memory. The important stuff. Okay. Uh, the time, the specific location, uh, and then I will, uh, as I continue moving down the street, just kind of toss it into a the uh, burn barrel or something that's you know on fire somewhere around. Maybe someone's cooking street food. Just take it into their little oven. Do you go back and share this with everybody else? Not right away. I mean, you know. When I catch up with everyone, okay. I'll probably I'll probably say, "Hey, uh, I got some info." Okay, something. but you know, okay. 
that didn't hurt. That was not helpful at all. Um, we are gonna say, because I was neither of them either. So we're just gonna go with Boom Boom. Where, where are you 2.30 in the afternoon? Welcome to, I have to get the name. Where did I put, I wrote the name down, it's super cute. Welcome to Beaky's Happy Home Helpers. How may I assist you this fine afternoon? All right. Um, do you leave your shop at all or are you there all day? Uh, I am there a good portion of the day. If I would leave, it would be to mess with Melissa, but that's going to tend to be in the evening time. So like most of the day okay. I have like a little shop in the back or I'm in the front. So yeah. Okay. Um, towards the evening time, uh, as you exit to go now, do you go like in a back alley to, to mess with her or like, where do you, what are you doing? Uh, her shop is unwisely right next to mine, and if I see she's gone out to reanimate a corpse, I'm like, now is the time. So I am likely to step into the alley and create infinitesimally small cracks in the exterior of her shop. Okay. Um, and once again, roll me whatever you would like to tell me what you see. I if have anything. finesse. May I, may I roll finesse? It's dextra, dexterous manipulation or subtle misdirection. Convince me. How would that alert you to what's going on around you? Um, I tend to be very alert when I'm placing mice because it's a very precise thing in spite of in spite of how it looks that I'm just absolutely insane. It is a very precise thing. So I'm very aware of the wind. I'm very aware of the structure of the wall. Sure. Do it. Uh, no modifier position control. I think you mm -hmm. said. Yep. Standard effect. Yep. My first roll. Let's see how it goes. Ooh, my dice are pink. Okay. A five and a two. Okay. Uh, so we are gonna pick the uh, high number because we always pick the high number. Um. So yeah, you are so intensely focused on what you're doing. Um. At some point, you feel something brush up against you, um, and when you look, you see somebody running around the corner and out of the alley. Um, Did you need a happy home helper? They don't oh, answer. They're already, already gone. Um, but you do find a note, and it is the same note that everybody else has found. Um, what do you do with this note? Intriguing. Uh, well, if it's later in the day, then I can close up the shop a little earlier. My shop isn't too far from the docks. So I can uh, go down to the docks, just like the famous song says, and I can share the news with one of my good fellow cult goers. Cult goers? Cult doers? Cult beers? Cultists? Cult, cult, members? Cultists, cult, cult members? friends? Cult friends. Cult friends, yes. Okay. So you are going to tell them about the note? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... And you know what? Just gender goodwill. That works. And just for fun, um, Blitz, I'm gonna have you do the same thing. Where yeah, are you right. at? Two thirty. Uh, <laughs> just for fun. Please. He's probably um, at the end of one of his shifts okay. at two thirty in the afternoon because ships only come in at certain times. Okay. Um, so he's probably sitting at one of the many like rot gut bars, um, just kind of nursing something before going back to the cult. Um, and roll me something. Tell me what you see. Uh, well, he's he's kind of paranoid, so he's always looking at the angles of when somebody might attack him. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to roll hunt. Sure. It's also used for tracking targets, etc. Yep. Go ahead. All by, right. the way, if, uh, by the way, for people that haven't used Foundry for Blades in the Dark, it has a little pop-up that tells you what each thing does, which is very helpful for, for newbie players. What okay. was the Thomas the... What was oh. that? <laughs> he rolled a six. <laughs> when you roll a six, if you have like the animation on, it does like an animation, and if you roll a one, it does like a bad animation for you. <laughs> <Okay. Or bad. laughs> like when you go bowling! <laughs> 
interesting. <laughs> you can customize one of the modules uh, that I pointed out to to <laughs> Elizabeth is Dice So Nice. It allows you to customize your dice, which is why mine look kind of like, you know, uh, bloody uh, metal. Oh, yeah, I should change my pink dice are nice for Panama. They're not really as bad as can. Um, so, you get a six. Um, as you feel someone brush up against you, you are actually able to reach down and grab their wrist. Um, and when you turn, it is a young boy, uh, maybe somewhere between like 15, 16 years old. Um, he is very dirty. He is very grimy. He's wearing ill-fitting clothes. Um, he has like worn work trousers that are like too short and a shirt that's too big. Uh, he has on a big coat, but it looks like it's like two sizes too small. Um, so it's obvious that this kid is probably one of the street urchins. Um, he is very thin, bright red hair, bright green eyes, uh, about 5'5". Five, five. Um, and so yeah, you have caught him and you are holding his wrist. Awesome. All right. Um, I'm going to kind of move my coat to show him one of my pistols. Have a seat, kid. He is, um, he kind of has an attitude because he was not expecting to get caught. I mean, he's done this, like, at least twice today, and nobody has caught him yet. Um, so he just kind of, like, murmurs under his breath as he sits down and, like, yanks his wrist away from you. I'm gonna like, like I'm not gonna hold you too long. I just want to see what's in the note before you leave, and I'm gonna look at the note. It's the same thing as everybody else. Awesome. Uh, All right, kid. Who paid you? He kind of looks away. Um, look, I the guy who paid me enough. It would feed my family for a week. All I had to do was slip you a note. I don't I don't know what the big deal is. Okay. You know, um, I uh I work with a bunch of people. We might be able to give you a more constant source of funds instead of, you know, working hand to mouth taking risks cuz I could have shot you. I didn't think it was a big deal. Um if you want to roll a resolve roll of some kind to see if you can try to get him to give you more information, you are more than welcome to. Can I well my resolve and my command are the same thing and I'm kind of threatening him with a gun. That would be command. Yeah. Cuz command is my only uh skill in resolve. Yeah, that's fine. So um it'll just be a little bit assume? Yeah. You'll just be a little yeah. bit gruffer with him instead of, like, yeah. trying to sway him. Oof. Yeah, if he runs, he runs. I'm not going to stop him. He does not run, um, but he is very insistent that he cannot tell you who hired him. Um, he just keeps saying, look, I... If I if I give you too much information, he's gonna hurt my family. He's gonna take the he's gonna take the money away. I'm not gonna be able to feed my family. I can't. I just I just can't. Just take the note. Just take the note. And let me go, please. I, I I got a baby sister. I got my mom. My dad died. Come on, come on, please. Just let me go. I don't I don't believe him, but I have no reason to hold the kid. Okay. So I'm gonna be like, hey, if you want to take me up on my offer to find more more dedicated work and maybe some help for your baby sister. Come back. I'm usually here every couple of days. Get out of here. He just nods and runs away. Okay, so later that night, you guys are all back at the thing. Uh, Boom Boom was going to tell you guys about the notes. So go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just, I, I assumed I was going to end up at the at the dive bar that... Um, that the fine blitz. that the fine that the blitz was at, but okay. Uh that's, so I that's what you yeah. wanna that's fine if that's what you wanna do. 
Because they have a really cool dual co- dual, uh, beer called the More Pork, and you have to like eat it with a spoon. It's so thick that I just can't resist getting a More Pork when at all possible. Ooh. It's a delicacy, okay? No judgment. That sounds terrible. Um, it's, it's got delicious. hair in it. Not all the time. 20% of the time it's hairless, which is, you know, a pretty good odd. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. I've, one in five, and if you uh, if you order it enough, they they try to they try to make sure they get you one without it. Yeah, it's nice. That's how people get to know me. I'm an affable fellow when I'm not insane. I forgot what am I doing again? I'm I'm just I'm get I'm getting a beer and telling them about the, the note that you've told us about now. Yes. Um I go, Hey gang, there's a note. And then I relay so what the note most says. Definitely not at that bar. She would not be caught dead in such an establishment. Is it the oh, yeah. is it the is it the spoon beer? I've heard people don't like it's the spoon everything. Beer. Okay. Um, and we are going to name this. And I'm um, actually this is a shout out to Max who named who's going to name this bar. Um, that is now going to be in every um. Plays in a dark game of mine. This bar is now the Tank and Spank. There you go. That's the bar. Oh, the name in. alone, she wouldn't be caught dead in that place. <laughs> Blame you. I think I helped them put lighting up when they first moved into town. I can't remember. So long ago. I mean, if you're boring, just say so. I have more refined taste. Yeah, as soon as as soon as soon um, I have been joined by Boom Boom and he's ordered his spoon beard, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, an urchin kid tried to slip it on me. And I'm going to show him the same note. Ooh, an orchard kid. Did you give him the business? Did you scare the orchard kids again? I mean, I, I, I'm i not good at recruiting, but I offered him, like, a place in our, you know, our group. Because we could always use more people. Especially one that's uh, good with their hands. That's a yeah. very useful trait. Uh, there are a lot of, there are a lot of groups that could use people good with their hands. So it's best that we... Uh, that we procure their services before anyone else can. I am I am not one of the speakers. I don't talk to people very well. Um, maybe if we could hunt him down, we can get somebody else to talk to him. But we should, it, you know, yeah. find everybody else. It's true. I could get the spoon beer to go. I I I think I think our friends all like spoon beer. I could get like a round of spoon beers to go. Um, I don't think Silver Tongue likes spoon beer. Well, Silver Tongue is a little too devoted sometimes, it feels like, but point taken. Uh, so I'll wolf down my spoon beer, and then I will get up slightly too fast. Okay, so you guys head back to the lair. That is so nasty. Um... <laughs> it's a Discworld <laughs> reference! I am referencing <laughs> Discworld! It is high art! That does not art. change the fact that it's Gross. Canonically, <laughs> <laughs> beer and on more pork is so thick you have to drink it with a spoon, or it's not That's good so beer. Funny. The only <laughs> drink I, I will accept eating, drinking, e- e- mm, ingesting with a spoon is like a shake or a root beer float or, or something. A root beer float was actually the very first thing that came to mind. I mean, I, I, I could go for, you know, like a concrete, which is those super thick milkshakes. Yeah, but it's I not. Mean, Thick beer. Yeah. Stuff floats in that beer, so... Stuff floats in this beer, too. We all float eventually. Uh, uh no, so... I got the Discworld reference when you called it a more pork. I was like, ah! Alright, so you guys are all back at your lair that night. Um, do any of you discuss your notes? I'm just gonna show them my note, because I didn't burn mine. Okay. Uh, so can I study? Because I have my note as well. Uh, anyone that wants to give me their notes, could I could I study them to see if the handwriting matches? Absolutely. Silver Tongue would have to be pulled out of her corner that she has. Like she's got like an office where, you know, her books that she's borrowed and a desk and whatnot. Because she's pouring over that new book she's got. Oh. Is this handwriting? Who knows? Who can tell? I think yeah, you and I are the only ones that actually have uh, the letter still. Yeah. Silver Tongue and Fred both burned theirs. 
uh, yeah, you don't know. You can't tell. Um, are all of you planning on going to this meet? Oh, yes. Okay. I can case. I want to case it first. Okay. Um, I was really hoping you guys were going to say you wanted to go because I was going to have to find another way to get you there because that's like <laughs> the whole point. <laughs> We've um, experienced enough players to see the lure when it's put in front of us. <laughs> that is very oh, true. Do they also have spoon beer in this location? No. Well, okay. yes, but no. Um, we are not going anywhere where there's going to be spoon beer. Um, so Fogcrest is located in Silkshore. Um, let me swoop you guys over there. Uh, Fancy Silkshore is um, a district best navigated by gondola. You all have access to your own gondola, just so you know. Um, like tiny personalized gondolas that all link up, or just like one big gondola we're all... This is one big gondola that you guys can all ride on together. Okay. Um, you're, not a, you're, not a, you're not a good enough crew yet to have like individual like personalized gondolas. You have to work up to that. Um... The Silkshore um, is the Vice, the Vice location for the most part. Um, the area caters to every imaginable pleasure, um, as well as some unimaginable. Um, gondolas will bring patrons right up to the brothels, the Vice dens, food stalls, exotic shops. Um, they all kind of perch along the waterside to easy access, get people in and out. Um, Fogcrest, though, it sits up a little higher on a hilltop. It is jammed with row houses and uh, has a maze of narrow stairways that kind of make up the streets. This part of Silkshore is more of a bohemian community. You have all of the free thinkers, the psychedelic explorers, the philosophers, and of course, artists. Um, how do you guys want to get there? Do you want to take your gondola? Do you guys want to show up together? Do you want to show up Separately, do you want to show up early, late? How do you guys want to do this? Well, I am in this area pretty consistently um, over in Laguna, so it's not too far from one of my normal hangouts for my personal vice. Madam Silvermoon has a very high end establishment, and you know, high end. We may as well all show up together. Yeah, I didn't think subterfuge makes a ton of sense because we all got the same note. So it's not like our existence is unknown. I think as long as we don't wear the same robes and cloaks. I think as long as we vary our outfits, we're probably okay. I still want to case the joint. I don't feel safe going in there without casing it first, at least. Do you guys want to go early so you guys can keep? Can if you wish to go early? You can go early, but leave the gondola so we can be there on time. Well, I mean, I spend plenty of time in that district, so it's not a long walk. I'll go with you. Okay. I mean, are you sure? I'm going to go visit Madame Silvermoon's first. Okay. Um, so what time are you guys headed over there? How early are you guys going? Um, well, let, let me the meeting's actually, at let me five, right? It. Yeah, the meeting's at five. What time are you leaving Madam Silvermoon to go case the joint? Is what probably, I should Probably, uh, probably about two-ish. So they can case it for a couple of hours and then be scarce for at least an hour. Okay. Um, what would you like to do? What would you like to roll to case this place? Uh, again, I'm going to use hunt. Uh, okay. you know, looking for potential uh entries and exits, places where uh like potentially rooms can be seen from the street because we were told it should be overlooking something. So yes. balconies, things like that. Let me see if I can actually. I just, I don't know if you can see it on there. I just marked the location with a little dot, if you can see it. It's like a little red house. Maybe. I can see where you are. 
Okay, yeah, it's right here. It's basically where you're going. Um, that is where you are. That's where you're looking, is right there. All right. Um, is there anything Fred wants to roll? Uh, yeah, I might as well um, just make sure that I'm kind of surveying the area. And okay. that would be a survey action. Okay. Since we're taking our time, is this going to be controlled? How how sketchy do you look doing this? Like, I is mean, it obvious that you're like casing a joint, or are you being kind of subtle about it? Well, I mean, there's uh, a, there's like a beach right there, so I'm assuming that there's like a place that I can sit. Okay. Well, I didn't know if and, you were, like, walking around the place or if you were just going to, like, hang out someplace and just watch. Um, mostly hang out someplace that's going to look mostly inconspicuous, like, sit out on the beach and, uh, okay. like, enjoy a drink. Okay, then yeah, controlled. Sorry, I'm just trying to imagine what Danny is Winifred like sipping something on the beach with like the full Black Harbor baklava, like midnight shade on the beach. I mean, it's not like this a sunny beach where like people are getting some sun. Uh, but no, I'm I'm probably cruising around the alleys and and moving about. Uh, you know, this is what I do. I just love that the further we're getting in this game, you're just slowly receding more into the dark. <laughs> you're going to be... <laughs> I'm right. going to buy you a spoon beer next time I see <laughs> So gross. Um, so, Fred, um, you don't really notice anything because with your skulking around in the alleys, um there were some people back there having a philosophical argument and they noticed you and now they're kind of like trying to follow you around. So you really haven't been able to notice anything because you're trying to get rid of these guys. Or I've joined in their philosophical argument. Oh, that is 100% up to you. Would you like to join in their philo philosophical argument? Yeah, I do that for a little while once I realize I'm not going to get any other information. Okay. Is um, that a euphemism for stabbing? Like, is that like a Panabon term? Like, philosophical oh, no. argument? Or is it no, like... that's like Fogcrest's whole, whole deal is like they're artists and um, okay. uh, hip, it, it's basically like hippies. So yeah, they're like out there having debates and all that fun stuff. Uh, Blitz, uh, in your time casing this joint, you don't really notice anything odd. Um, the the building uh, stays dark for the most part. You can kind of see a light on upstairs, but you can't really see what's inside. Um, you don't really see anybody moving around. Nobody enters. Nobody exits. It doesn't really look any. It doesn't really. It just looks like a building. Do you go up to the building itself to like look at anything? No, I'm gonna walk past it uh, on okay. my way to leave. But okay. given that this is Fogcrest, it is entirely possible the establishment isn't open until the later hours, even though there's no real sunset. Uh, time is still a thing that, that humans use to, you know, keep themselves sane. Um, so walking by, um, the upstairs portion is all windows, but it's kind of like the tinted windows, so you can't really see in. Um, the outside, there isn't a sign that uh says it's a business but if you look in the windows um it is dark but with the the little bit of light that you are getting um it does look like a gallery on the first floor uh, but it does it looks empty fair enough okay once the requisite amount of time has passed i will wait for fred at our designated meeting spot okay and then i'm going to go back to madam silvermoons to kill time until everybody else shows up um, so the meet time rolls around. You are all at this location. Um, what do you guys do? Again, it is still dark on the, on the inside. You can kind of see a light 
upstairs. Um, but you can't really tell if there's anybody inside. Could I try surveying to anticipate the type of information we might get from this person? Because they know what we're looking for. That's broad, but if they know we're a cult, I could try to anticipate. No. Oh, okay. That's fair. Um, just because you don't know who you're meeting. Um, actually, hold on. If you want to... If you want to roll something to see if you know who owns this building or who owns this gallery. Sure. That would be a survey. I would say it's more of a study, maybe. I have the same point in study, so I will try it. Okay. No harm in trying. We'll see how coloring mm -hmm. my dye differently worked for me. Okay. Nice. Yay. Um, yeah, you know that this building is owned by a gentleman named Raffello. Um, he it, it almost looks like he took a couple of these row houses um, and renovated them into one big space. Um, it is a private gallery. Um, Do you share this information with the group? Not yet. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know that uh, this gentleman owns this location. Um, you do know that he is an artist, so it makes sense that he would have a gallery. Um, you know that um, he has a, his studio is on the second floor. Silvertongue is just going to walk up. Do you try the door? Yes. It's unlocked. Would you like for me to actually go first in case, just in case? Oh, she's not waiting. Like, everybody's trying, like, looking at each other, figuring, like, who's going to go first? She just rolls her eyes and walks up to the door. <laughs> I mean, the last time someone in one of the games I was in did that, there was a head in a jar on a table. So, like, I'm a little skittish after that. <laughs> you yeah, were the one who put the head in the jar. Exactly. Doesn't make me any less skittish. Um, yeah, so you go in the door. Um, no alarms go off. Uh, the room is dark, um, but you can kind of see, so you're not like bumping into things. You can kind of like make out uh, uh, mm -hmm. things that are in the room. Um, there are canvases hanging on the walls. Um, you can see stands um, all around the room itself that have like little sculptures on it. Um, there is a staircase to the back of the room that leads upstairs, and there is a door on either side of the room. And again, you don't hear anything really inside. Um, you don't hear like people talking, you don't hear people moving around. Um, but the note did say to meet upstairs. Um, she, I'm going to actually take a moment. And she's going to um, attune to the ghost field. Okay. And, well, we'll see if it succeeds first. Mostly she's, um, if there's any uh, spirits or ghosts nearby that can tell me what to expect. Okay. Uh, just risky standard. I would just do controlled standard. There's nobody really around. There's no real, yeah. Okay. Oh, those are fancy. Um, I know, yeah. Right? I love them. Um, yes. So um, you are able to attune. Um, there are spirits around, um, and you don't have any problem contacting them. What would you like to do now that you have done this? Uh, get the attention of one of them. Okay. Um, pardon. Oh, me? Yes. 
Do you know what is going on upstairs? Oh, it's rather boring if you ask me. He just spends all of his time during the day up there painting. Nothing but painting. Anything odd about him? Oh, everything's odd about this man. Um, is there something particular you want to know? Well, to be fair, I'd rather- I'd like to know how he knows what I want, but I'd rather not you be able to give me that answer. No, um, I- I don't know, uh, what he wants with you or how he knows what you want. Um, I do know that he has a secret location that he visits oh, do you mostly every night. Can you tell me where? My brain just went blank. Uh, Six Tower. <laughs> okay. It's it's a um, a private club in Six Tower. All right. Well, I thank you very much. And she's gonna go upstairs. Okay. Are you checking out either of the rooms, or are you just going right upstairs? Uh. She'll just go right upstairs. Okay. What about everybody else? I'm gonna go upstairs also. Okay. Yeah, just heading up. Alright. Boom Boom? I can't think of her. Thank you for calling me Boom Boom. It makes me smile every time someone does that. <laughs> um, I can't think of a reason to check the other rooms. Um, I don't know. I, I, as an eccentric weirdo, I like to make sure their eccentric weirdos can have their privacy too. Okay. Hashtag um, eccentric weirdo solidarity. Um, going up the stairs, there is it opens to a large room. Um, windows almost completely line the walls upstairs. Um, to the right of the room, um, you do see another staircase that leads down. Um, but inside this room, there are uh, canvases piled up along the walls that are in various stages of complete. Um, the room kind of smells of paint, both fresh and stale. There is a tarp on the floor on the left in the corner on the far side of the room. Um, and on the tarp is a can an evil, an evil, an easel with a canvas on it. And it looks like somebody has started to paint the skyline on the canvas. On the other side of the room, there is a man sitting in a chair. Is it an evil easel? <laughs> it is not. I just, it's late and I don't know how to talk anymore. And that's fair. Um, the man is wearing a black cloak over his head. Um, kind of, kind of like Danny, actually. Is that, that's kind of like the look that the guy has right now. Um, if nobody says anything to him, he will stand up and face you. I mean, we are, he, he's expecting us, so I'm waiting for him to say something. Okay. Um, he stands up, and as he stands, he says, um, it is about time. And he very dramatically, like, turns and flips the hood of his cloak and, like, shakes his hair out, even though it's in, like, a man bun, and it doesn't actually shake. Um, and he's very tall. He's about 6'2". Actually, I don't know if that's tall. It's tall to me because I'm 5'1", so it's just very tall to me. Um, he is very pale. He has black hair, brown eyes. Um, he is wearing an extremely nicely tailored suit um, with his black cape. Uh, so yeah, he is um, quite impatient. Um, it is about time. I have been waiting for you, and I do not like to be kept waiting. We have arrived right as the time was written. Yeah, you if you have been waiting, that time. is your problem. Yeah. Yeah, put four on the, on the paper next time. As he steps closer to you, um, Silvertongue, you 
recognize him. Ooh. Um, you have seen him uh, with the people from the Circle of Flame. Ah, uh, all right. Um, I I know what you believe, and he looks right at Silver Tongue as he's saying this. I know. She has to like crane her head to look up because she's like a <laughs> foot shorter than he is. Um, he says, I know what you seek, and I can help you get it. That sounds pretty nice. It is, isn't it? What's the catch? No catch, really. Um, I need something. You need something. You get me what I need, and you can have what you need. It's a win-win situation. That would be what he would refer to as a catch. Also, lots of lots of vague. I need I need a little bit more than. What oh yeah, you he, he is. What you need. He uh, is I, very yeah. vague all of the time. I mean, really, what what is a catch? You know. Do me a favor. Sorry, I'm just trying spent... to. I'm just trying to get into the. Uh, you know. The atmosphere here of um, Bogcrest. Dispense with the dramatics and just tell us what you need. Well, first I'll tell you what I can get you. You've heard of Christophe Claremont, right? Um, for anybody That's who one of has... those names on that list, right? It is one of those names on the list. Um, yeah, the lore! The lore! Um, well, I happen to know where you can find his journal. Uh, for the people at home, um, the during their research, they have found names of people who have uh, been said to have been involved in hunting down Kotar and possibly involved in hiding the eye, the hand, and the heart. Um, one of the names on that list was Christophe Claremont. Um, based on everything that you've read, um, two of the names you are almost certain were involved in the mummification of Kotar. And then a couple of the other ones, including uh, Claremont, uh, you were almost positive that they each had a piece and hid it. Um, you have found evidence that Claremont kept a journal where he actually listed the places they picked to hide each piece. Uh, but it has been impossible for anybody to ever actually track down the journal or prove that it even exists. So that is so that. We we don't know that. Kristoff, we don't know which piece Kristoff had control over where it went. Right. Right. Um, but it if what you have read is true, he knew where the other pieces were going to be hidden and he listed them in his journal. Again, you don't know that that's true. It's a rumor. Nobody's ever been able to prove it. Um, but this guy, Rafello, is telling you that he knows where you can find this journal. And what is it you need from us? Look, I know, I know you're not thieves. And then he looks at Fred. Most of you, I'm sorry. Most of you are not thieves. Um, hey, I'm not a thief. You're a thief. Am, no one tells I me know. anything anymore. I am a redistributor of wealth. I just talked to some fine gentlemen out in the out in the streets about uh, wealth redistribution and how it works. Anyway, that's that's fine. Um, there's an item that I need. Um, it's located in a safe, and I'm coming to you because that journal that you want is in that same safe. So you grab my item, you grab your journal, you bring me my item, and you have the journal as your payment. What can you tell us about this item? It, it is an amulet. Um, it's was said to have been worn by she who slays in darkness, and I need it. She who slays in darkness is one of the forgotten gods in the world. Um, and one of the ways that people can worship uh, her is uh, the creation of uh, blessed idols, artwork, ritual spaces, and or artifacts. And um, it is said that if somebody has her amulet, it will grant them great inspiration to create beautiful works of art. And since he's an artist, he wants this amulet. 
Where is the safe? Before I tell you, I need you to agree to this job. I will see to it that it gets done. Do I have your word? You do. The safe that you are looking for is located in the attic room. And he kind of pauses for dramatic flair. Um, Skurlock Manor. Have fun. Skurlock. Great. Very well. I lean over to Blitz and try to whisper, although it's not very whispery, kind of convenient that they're in the same safe, but, I mean, two birds, one stone, right? Yeah, but if we get found out, we'd be making a very, very powerful enemy. Oh, I doubt he would let us live if he found us, so that is not anything you need to worry about. Well, there you go! All problem solved! For everybody at home. Silver lining. <laughs> he was on um, my list of someone who could have been an ally or an enemy. I know. He could have been my friend. And I'm I imagine so we've had not. maybe dealings in passing, but it's a, just a neutral. I am sort of... so glad that you did not pick him as a friend. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. For everybody at home, um, Lord Scarlock is um, very, very old. He is very powerful, very wealthy. Um, it is said that he is maybe a vampire or maybe immortal because he is so old, nobody knows just how old he is. Um, he is a purveyor of arcane artifacts. Um, he studies the occult. Um, his manor is in Six Towers, and it is fenced in, um, and it actually kind of looks run down. You're not actually sure that anybody lives there. Um, it's the kind of place that kids tell ghost stories about um, because nobody actually knows if anybody lives there. Nobody has seen him in a while. Um, so yeah, you guys, he wants you to break into Skrlock Manor, go up to the attic, and break into the safe. Uh. I, I suddenly feel a lot less nonchalant about that alarm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Good. Well, you're shrouded in blackness, and all we can see <laughs> is like the front bit of your face. I feel like I'm watching the Menominos for the first time with the with the, with the black <laughs> curtain behind it. Um. So, with that information, we are going to take our ten minute break in just a minute. Um. First, I want to remind everybody about the giveaway that we're doing. Um, we are giving away a PDF copy of Prowlers and Paragons Ultimate Edition um, from Mobius Worlds Publishing. And um, Blades in the Dark Dice Crypt with Blades in the Dark Dice. Um, so hashtag RunPC in the chat for an entry. Donate bits for, for an entry. Subscribe or gift subscriptions for entries. Um, and we will pull the winner at the end. Um, Did you avoid scale? For entries? You know what? I've made all of the decisions today. I'm going to say, as part of the planning committee, you get to make that decision, Ava. I mean, I've spent all my bits, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. My I vote is yes. <laughs> a gold... If you do a gold gift, you can get an entry. Yay. Um, and when we come back, we will do the gather information, and then we will see how our crew gets out of this, if they get out of this, alive. Press the button! <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we are going to get back into our game in just a minute, but I just want to remind you of our giveaways really quick. I know I just did that like 10 minutes ago, but just in case. Um, Prowlers and Paragon on PDF and Blades in the Dark dice set, and a coffin to hold them in. Um, put your injuries in now. We will pull the winner at the end of the game. Um, okay, so you guys have been hired by someone named Raffello that Silvertongue recognizes as at least being um, 
at least knowing the circle flame um you guys are hired to break into the skirlock manor to steal an item from the safe in the attic um we are going to do some gathering of information um what would you guys like what kind of what what do you guys want to do what what kind of information do you think is going to be important for you to both get in and out of this place silver tongue is going to start by contacting the circle of flame okay what does everybody else want to do i mean probably going to be a good idea to figure out if there's any alternative ways in and out of the manor. Okay. So I'll look into that. Okay. Boom Boom or Blitz, is there anything you want to do or do you just want to assist the other two? I think I'll assist um, our uh, sneaky friend. Okay. I would like to craft some mice and maybe a poison if I can. Sure. Okay. Um, Silver Tongue. Mm -hmm. Reaching out to the Circle of Flame, what are you trying to find out? Well, she's trying to verify the information they were given and making sure the information itself is good. Okay. Uh... How do you want to do that? Um, let's see. How savvy is she? <laughs> uh, where's my? Uh, she's got some sway. Okay, and some consort. So yeah, she would. I mean, she's not like friends with any of them, but she has like gone to them you know before in the past so she's i guess worked with them sort of on occasion um so i guess there's probably a little bit of rapport there they know her okay. in any case okay. um so she would just i mean poke about just gently trying to get that same information uh without letting them know that she already has it okay um Do you have a contact that you are going to try to reach out to, or...? Um, not explicitly. I don't think okay. Quellen is a part of them. Okay. Um, are you familiar enough with them to know where their location is? I imagine so, yes, because she's gone to them, like, to do research before. Okay. Maybe uh, she know. maybe I'm trying to think of how she would have gotten in contact with them in the first place. Maybe it was like an old schoolmate that is now part of the Circle of Flame and Okay. That's how she um, got Are they one of the seven or are they just a member? Oh, I think they'd just be a member. Okay. Uh, Alright, and for uh blood bread and blitz are you are you looking for like blueprints or what are you what are you guys trying to do i mean given that we have that we've decided that there's several weeks of time between like when we got the job and we were doing it i would imagine it's a lot of just exploring the the area okay all right um, so for, I have not forgotten about Boom Boom, we're going to do your tinkering rolls in just a minute. Um, no worries. For Silver Tongue, um, so you're going to reach out to an old classmate that you know is in the Circle of Flame? Yes. Um, where would you, would you go to their, I guess, club? It, um, or would you meet them somewhere else, or what would you do? I think she would probably send them uh, uh, 
message, whatever, inviting them to, I don't know, lunch, dinner, something. Okay. Um, so you uh, reach out to this school friend. Um, we will call them, unless you have a name picked out. Um, I just had one and now I forgot what it was. Um, Una Wayland. Um, okay. So she agrees to meet you for lunch. She is already there when you arrive. Oh, it's, she stands up when you come up today. Oh, it's been so long. How have you been? Yes, I've been... I've been good. Um, I... Yes, I've been good. Oh, well, please, please sit down. Yes. Um, it's it's been so long. What what caused you to to reach out to me? I was surprised to get your your message. Oh yes, uh, you know uh, how I can get researching. Um... Have I frozen? No. Okay. Everybody stopped moving, and it was completely silent. Oh. <laughs> so I thought my screen had frozen. <laughs> We're engrossed by your story. <laughs> Line. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's gonna just small talk first, you know, order food and, and get the, you know, it's been a while, life update sort of thing um, before, like, you know, midway through the meal, she'll bring it back around to her research and that's why I've reached, that's why I've reached out to you. I was hoping to use Make use of your particular resources oh. or knowledge. Oh, well, you know I'll help you as much as I can. What exactly are you looking for? Well, it's... Trying to put find any truth to a rumor that I've heard. Oh, I do love a good rumor. Yes. Um, this is particularly about, uh, my brain is dumb. An amulet, uh, said to, well, belong to she who slays in the darkness. Oh. And its potential location. Well, that is interesting. Where did you hear this rumor, if I may ask? Oh, you know how rumors are. I've picked up pieces here and there. Okay. It is... Um, it is said that she had an amulet. Um, it was her most prized possession. It was given to her by a former lover. It is um, a bright red ruby in the shape of a heart. Um, and it says that, you know, and you know how these things go. Um, she she loved art. She loved um, beautiful things. And it is said that if you have this amulet, it will um, inspire you to create beautiful things in her, in her name. Have you heard anything about where it is, potentially? Give me a sway. Or a console. Consort. Which, whatever. Whatever you would I like have to one use die for both. <laughs> okay. uh, where's my character sheet? There you are. Let's go for a sway. Uh, risky, <laughs> standard, just normal? You can do controlled. Control? Okay. Mm -hmm. Control standard. Fine. Boink. Oh. What is that? Can't read these dice. <laughs> I was going to say, is that a two? What is that? It is a two, yes. <laughs> that is a two. Press, um, you can press on by, by lowering it to risky. If, uh, um... I would like to press that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... You know, I I don't 
I don't have an exact location, um, but there is a, it is said that um, Lord Skurlock might have it. Oh, that does line up with what I have heard. But, I mean, you know how these things go? All of the weird things, they always blame it on him, and he always has it, and it's locked up somewhere. You know, I mean, it's all just rumor. Yes. But he does have a reputation. And reputations aren't typically built out of thin air. This is true. Was there anything else that you wanted to, any other research you wanted to run by me? Well, I am I am always, you know, looking for information um, regarding the remains of Kotai. You're still looking at that? I am, yes. What, what, what is it this time? Well, I have a potential lead on the journal of... Oh my god, I closed the names. Christophe uh, Claremont. Oh, you don't really think that exists, do you? I have to follow every lead, you know. Fair enough. Um... Oddly enough, the last I heard, um, someone at the club said that Skurlock had that to do. But, I mean, that has to be a lie. It doesn't exist. It's not real. The one you heard this from, it doesn't happen to be a painter. Actually, it does. All right. I'm sorry. To be, to be perfectly frank, I am trying to verify the rumors that I had heard, and unfortunately, that is the same source. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose it doesn't hurt. Is that... It doesn't happen to be he who you heard about the amulet's location, is it? That? I have actually heard that from him and a couple of other okay. members. Oh. It was great seeing you again. You two, we must do this more often. Yes, uh, yes, I shall endeavor to remember when I'm not, uh, lost in the stacks. Please do. Of course. And Silver Tongue right. is actually going to pay for lunch. Okay. For both of them. All right. Just for her, not for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, boom, boom. That's me. Okay. So what exactly are you trying to do? Uh, I would like to craft... So I have my mice. Uh, I would like to craft a line thrower. Um, and then if I can, I would like to make some skull fire. But I think poisons are probably harder for me than spark craft. Okay. Um... Which one do you want to try to do first? Um, I want to do the line thrower. I'd like to get it to tier three, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I really kind of hope this fails. <laughs> I mean, I'm an artificer, so I get a plus one automatically. Yes, you um, do. And also, I don't remember what the coppers do, but if I need to, I do have that copper that someone graciously gave me. That the increases beginning. the effectiveness of your roll. So there so you go. Standard becomes a greater effect. 
Okay, so. Or limited becomes standard. The way we're going to do this is you get an extra die. So you get, you're, you're going to roll your tinker, right? So you get a die per dot. Um, and actually, what is your, I don't know that you guys have a good workshop because I didn't actually expect anybody to want to do something that like this. Technically, <laughs> my business is a workshop? That is true. Um, okay, so. Um, how much? I gave you what, like three coin, I think? Wait. We have a ritual sanctum in lair. It counts as sacred in an arcane workshop. Okay. But no, that's nobody for wants me doing ritual. things in arcane workshops. No. <laughs> no. Nobody wants me doing stuff in arcane workshops. Um, okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do tinker, and then um, you can spend a coin if you want to try to increase the quality. Um. Sorry, sure. my, my is dinging. Oh, yeah. For me, I I will spend a coin. I am invested in this um, uh, Batman type launcher thing. For this, there's not really any. Uh, I'm not going to say there's really any drawbacks. Um, although, actually, I take that back. Um, because of what it is. It is conspicuous. Uh, so if you are able to make this and you have it on you when you're there um, and you try to do like a prowl or something, you it's going to be difficult for you because it is big and it makes some noise when you're using it. Okay. I'm willing to take that chance. Um, okay. Not only because I don't have any points in prowl, but I really... Yeah. Let's, let's do this thing. Is this okay. risky? Control standard. Um. So rate. we are gonna do because you you have time to actually do it. We'll do controlled. Um. And we are gonna do. You know, it's good. Do great. Cool. Not just because I don't know what any of this does, but cool beans. Okay. Um. I'm gonna say for that. You are able to get a um a tier two line thrower because Neat. you did roll a five. Um, it is conspicuous. Um, like I said, so if you are taking it with you, um, it, it's gonna it's gonna make some noise. It's gonna be hard to kind of hide with it. Um. All right, and then you wanted to do what now? Uh. I've got the mice. Um, I wanted to try to make some skull fire, but okay. Um, so the drawback yeah. is yeah. this is volatile. Um, yes. and depending on how this goes, if you roll badly, you will get um a level one harm. Great for doing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> you never know until you try. That is fair. Um, so yeah, go ahead and um, again, you you do have some time to like really kind of take your time, but it is because it's volatile, it is still risky, and we're going to do standard. Is this a tinker, or does alchemy have its own special... It's this tinker. Okay, well, I feel a little bit better about that. Uh, so this is risky, you said? Mm-hmm. And standard. Um, Ooh. Um, yeah, you don't have any problems making this. Um, you do not take the harm from it because you got the six. Um, so yeah, Melissa you... says this stuff is so difficult. There's nothing difficult about it. What is <laughs> Melissa's problem? She's being so dramatic over nothing. Um, you um yeah. So you have skull fire now. Um, I'm going to say you were able to, with that six, you were able to make, um, we'll say three vials of skull fire. Fabulous. Okay. Um, Ava, the name that you were looking for, 
was mm. Una, uh, U-N-A, um, Wayland, W-A-L-U-N-D. Okay. All right, so Fred and Blitz. What are you guys doing? Looking high, looking low, crawling in dark spaces. Okay. Lurking. Perfect. Um, so we'll start with Fred. What exactly are you trying to accomplish? What are you specifically looking for? Just ways in. Maybe like if there's a way in through the sewers or if there's a way in, you know, um, like how the, the areas around it are. Just really trying to get a sense of the neighborhood. Okay. And, and figure out like getting around. So when it comes time to run, you know, the options will be known. Um, and when it comes time to enter, we will have the best ways in and the best ways out. Okay. Uh, Blitz, are you just kind of going along for the ride or were you looking for something different? Um, it, it's it, mostly it's going to be helping because a different, it, you know, searching from different angles. Um, Blitz is more than willing to uh, check things out at different types times of the day. Um, so that way, they're they're both of them are essentially looking at the building from different angles, going, "How do we get in?" Because they have different expertise. Since he's looking mostly at like how would how defensible is this place? Um, what are the potential weak points? And uh, Fred would be looking at it as, how do we break in? How do we get out? Um, I did not do a very good job paying attention to time. Um, so we are, wait, um, I didn't, I thought we went until 3.30. Is it really? Oh yeah, no, I guess it is. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to make you guys roll for these. Um, I am going to tell you that there is a sewer entrance. Um, the sewer entrance has a spark craft locked door on it. Um, it is breakable, but it you would need time to to pick the lock on it and do it safely. Um, the outside of the actual home, um, it doesn't look like anybody has been here in a while. Um, the porch on the front and the back, uh, the wood looks rotted. Um, the doors are barred. All of the windows have bars on the outside of them. Um, from what you've seen, you could probably get in through the front door or the back door. Um, you would just need to pry the bars off of it. Um, but there is there's an exit or an entrance through the sewers. Um, and then there's a front door and a back door. The windows are pretty much a no-go because they are barred. They are all barred. Uh, it, the front door, I'm assuming, faces the street, but what about the back door? Does it face the street? The, oh, let me actually switch back here. Um, so if you guys are all on the Six Towers map, right here is Skrlock Manor. Um, so there is street access. The back, um, there is a bit of a backyard, if you could call it that. Um, but there is a, a big fence around the entire property. Um, and it's one of those, like, old, like, iron fences. Um, there is a couple of places that you could get through the bars because, I mean, it's old and it's rusted and there are, you would be able to, like, sneak in um, through the bars in a couple of different places. Um, but, yeah, that's where, that's where it's located. You might be able to bring your gondola up because it's on the water, kind of. So you might be able to come up that way. 
Um, you mean we could gondolier at the entrance? Not quite all the way to the entrance, but you could gondolier to like here and hoof it. And to be clear, I'm saying gondolier, L E E R, as in to look at. Yeah. Yes. These are the jokes at nighttime, folks. Waka waka. Um, I think our ba the backyard's probably going to be the safest bet. We have less chance of being seen unless we want to make that our exit. Granted, if we can remove the lock from the sewer, the sewer can be our backup exit. Right. I think, personally... And this is just me and my style. I would rather go in from the basement and exit from the back because there's a greater chance of being spotted at the back. And I'd rather be spotted at the end of the whole ordeal than at the beginning. That is just the way I think. There's some wisdom in that. The flip side is that there is the lock to deal with. Uh, out of character, are you telling any of us this, or are you two discussing this amongst yourselves, actually? I mean, we probably, like, because this is over a long period of time, we probably do talk it over with you, so. Yeah, it would have been something they, okay. that uh, Blitz would have discussed with the group. Hi. How long, because I have some tinkering spark crafts, even if it's a, like, is that something that I could have work, work on, potentially? I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, because I have a spark craft, I don't actually know how the lockpicking mechanic in the game works. Uh, but since tinkering, lockpicking, finesse is kind of my thing, and intentionally, is that something that I could do? Like... While they go in to do the searching, I would be working on the lock and then join them? Um, For the purpose, because you guys were all in the attic together, I'm going to say no. Okay. Well, an easy way of dealing with locks is a good asset. Um, I will give you this. Um, this is a blueprint of the mansion. Um, so number one down here is the sewer entrance where the spark craft door is. Um, you guys are up here at 46. That is where you started, and that's where we're going to get back to. Um, based on what you guys have seen from the outside, the house isn't in the best shape. Um, so there is a very good chance that some of these staircases aren't passable. Um, and because nobody... Um, you guys didn't actually talk to anybody that has been in the house or anything, or and you guys don't actually see anybody like patrolling outside. Um, you don't know what if there's any traps inside. You don't know if there. You don't. You don't know what's inside. Um, you only know that there is what the outside looks like, and you know that there is the sewer entrance right here. Um, I'm going to give you the blueprint, though, because you could have easily gone and gotten the blueprint somewhere. So this is what you're working with. So that all being said, do you guys want to come in through the ground floor? Like in the back, 20 is the back door. Um, or do you want to come in through the sewers? The sewer seems like the farthest point from the place you want to be, which means it would take the longest to get back to. Well, yeah, our way in doesn't have to be our way out. Uh, 
I would say enter through the sewers, as we, that is less likely that we will be seen going in. I mean, you can always park your, or park, um, you can always stash your gondola nearby so that you can, like, exit out and have a, a way out quickly mm -hmm. if you need to. I think that's our best bet. Okay. Yep. Entering through the sewers definitely seems like the best option. Okay. Um, well. Make sure that is what I want. Okay. Um, all right. So. Ooh. We are back in this attic room. Um, Don't have a dog. I have put walls everywhere, and the doors that are locked are actually locked if you try to open them. Um, there is a clock now that the alarm is going off. You have an eight clock um, entitled Escape. Um, each floor will have its own four clock. Um, I need to pull up my version of the map so that I can... That is not the right version of my map. Where is my right version of my map? I just would like you to know I don't have a token with sight on this map, so I okay. can't see anything. I need to fix that, and I am sorry. Which one are you? I think that is you. Um, let me... Do, do, do. I am sorry about that. Um, let me see. Friendly missions enabled. Uh, I think that is you. I'm going to put your token back out. Okay, ah. try now. Yes, I can see. Wonderful. Um, if you click on your token, can you see some stuff, everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So. The alarm is going off. Um, I am going to say now that we're jumping back into this, um, you do kind of hear um, what sounds like um, like locking me mechanisms throughout the house. Um, so yeah. What do you guys want to do? Uh I'm going to check the window. How sturdy are those bars? The very back. Uh, yeah, scratch that idea. Just, just so you know, the windows. Um, none of the windows are a an easy out. You okay. are not going to be able to get out through any of the windows. Good to know. Um. So yeah, the alarm is going going off. You guys have an eight clock that is titled Escape. You have a four clock in the attic. Um, if the attic clock fills up, things will happen. If the escape clock fills up and you are not out of the house, um, you will be caught. Right. Okay. So, out the door we came in. Sounds like a plan. I'll take point. Actually, uh... You're better at hiding. How about Fred, you take point. And I'll be right behind you. Danny, you're muted if you're saying anything. All I said was okay and um so far, so... Okay. Uh, let's see. I believe... Based on my recollection of La Blueprint, the quickest way to the stairs is going to be this way. Oh, is Wait. that a no. balcony on 50? You'll have to go find out. Yes. Uh, okay. Let me go back to the map we are on. Oh. Was yeah, there anything in the safe? 51. Yet. What? A cord 51 is a balcony. 
And Danny was asking if there was anything in the safe. Oh, yeah, no, the safe is empty. Whatever was in there is not there anymore. Uh, um, yeah, so Silver Tongue definitely uh, stashes away the journal. Okay. Uh, do you want to go check the balcony door? Yes. Okay, you can move your token over there. I don't like how happy you are about that. <laughs> Um, it'll be fine. North, right? Yeah. Yeah, figure. So, do you remember when you heard the locking mechanisms? Yeah. This door is unpassable now. Um, oh, you're joking. Nope. Do you think I was going to make it that easy for you to get out of the house? No. Of course not. I will say, some of the locked doors that you come across, you may be able to pick the lock. Um, mm -hmm. I will let you know if you can. This is not one of those locks. Um, okay. If you if you look out, the balcony um, itself is um, it doesn't look safe to be on. Um, but when you heard the locking mechanisms, this is one of the door that had kind of bars going across it. Um, so, right. so you can look it out. I'm going, I would like to, sorry, somebody else can take an action. Does this door here, can I open this door? Can I unlock this door? Um, give me, give me a finesse roll. Can I um, tinker the, with my sure. tinkery tools? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So... What will my fine lockpicks get me? Um, so for your fine lockpicks, um, we are gonna say, um, I'm gonna give you for that. I'm gonna give you an extra dice. Um, it is risky. Um, but it is standard. But you get an extra dice to go with it. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. You are able to unlock the door. Oh, I guess I need to unlock it for you. Sorry, there you go. I unlock the door, but but um there's crime tape over the stairwell, so we can't go that way. <laughs> it is not crime tape. It is my way of telling you that that is an impassable stairway. It has been um collapsed. So you cannot get down that way. Um, the blue coats said do not cross and so we couldn't all right i have an idea but i don't know how how do you rule that most keys work because they're really not described how they actually work in text you know i've never been asked that question before and i've never thought about it what are you trying to do with it? Well, my thought is if so, it describes that that there's an echo of the entire city across the ages, trapped in the ghost field. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes a door to that place can be found. My thought is those doors might show up where actual physical doors are here, and if I can open that door, we can basically get out through the ghost field. I am down to enter the ghost field. That sounds really dangerous, but... <laughs> I can dig it. So my initial thought is an attune to see if there's any doors here. Okay, yeah, let's do that first. Attune to see if there's any, any ghost doors. Um, and if there aren't any on this floor, you can do it each floor. Okay. Um... I have a copper gift, so I'm going to use that since this is my first, like, roll that actually matters. Yep. <laughs> I'm assuming my position starts at risky. Uh, uh, yes. The, yes. Does the effect start at standard? Yeah, we'll do standard. Okay, so I'm going to use that copper gift to increase the effect to great. Mm -hmm. roll. I got a four. Um, there are no ghost doors on this floor. Um, I will say... Mm -hmm. 
I will say that there is a ghost on this floor. Oh. Um, since you're tuning to the ghost field, um, you do see the ghost. Okay. If you want to talk to it. I don't know if you want to talk to it. Or if it wants uh, to talk yes, to you. Yes, actually. Um, and before she attunes, she does don her uh, uh, spirit mask. Okay. Um, I think hers is just basically a plain, just a blank white mask. Nothing. No features. Nothing. Okay. Um, uh, hello, you there. What? Well, I was wondering if you might know a quick way out of here for us. There are no quick ways out of here. I was afraid of that. Especially now that somebody set off that damn alarm that keeps going. Do you know where the amulet that was in the safe is um, who took it out. You know, that person that was here earlier wasn't with you? Can you describe them for me? Oh, um, yeah, they were a person. Um, this is a man. Um, about, I don't know, Polish. Um, he was wearing a cloak. I didn't really look at him. I just, you know, you guys looked like maybe one of, it would have been one of you. Oh, I'm going to skin him alive. Um, if you're trying to get out of here, the alarms are going off. Um, all of the exits are going to be locked. You're going to have to make your way down to the basement if you want out. Fantastic, thank you. Okay. It's going to like slip up the spirit mask and talk to the others. We were set up. Can I... Oh, sorry, go ahead. We will likely need to exit through the basement unless I can find a ghost store. That was not what I meant to do. All right. Are we making this one quiet or are we making it uh, loud? Because, well, there's alarms, so there's no... There, it, it all depends on our visibility at this point because they know we're here. Don't make it loud yet. These walls look like they're already about to give, and I don't know if any of them are load-bearing. I meant... If I'm using guns or swords. Uh, let's do swords until we're seen, and then just uh, immediately you can switch to guns at that point. No discussion needed. Can, All right, fine. Can I do a, a study to see if there's, if I can tell if the alarms all sound at the same rate if they all have the same frequency volume they do kind of thing okay yeah i'm just i'm not gonna make you roll for that they do if we've been set up grab some books we might as well make some kind of coin off of this and uh i'm not grabbing gonna... i'm not grabbing herbalism book i'm gonna go ahead and move over here yeah you guys can make your way um According to the blueprint that you saw, there was another set of stairs down here. I don't know if you can down see that way. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And this way, that's where we're going. All right, I'll go that way. I'm not actually running ahead of everybody. I feel like we're just kind of going as a, as maybe yeah. a not super tight group, but as a group. How do I, yeah. uh, this is, how do I move the map? Oh, come on. Right click. Right, right, right click. Oh my God, this is. There it goes. Where's everybody at? No, I just closed the door doing that. Now I'm stuck in the door. There it goes. What are these? What are these black dots? Are they pillars? Are Those are pillars. Okay. So we're going are there way. people coming up the stairs right now? You can hear people on the ground floor, you don't hear anybody coming up this particular set of stairs. And then down I will go. Yes. Uh, question. Yes. So I have mice to make explosions. Mm -hmm. Could I send one in the opposite direction to make an explosion happen somewhere else so we can move opposite? Oh, I don't know what kind of range I get. Um... Distraction. You do you want to set it up on the attic, or do you want to take it? Do you want to set it up? Do you want to do it on the first floor? 
Uh, I want to do it like, um, essentially, maybe the other direction from where we're going. So maybe closer to the attic, going the other way. So it looks like we were going the other way. I I don't know what I'm saying. It's very late. So There's yeah, little, yeah. Uh, I think just wait until we get to like this the set the, the next floor down, and then send them off so that anyone who's coming will think we went down further on that particular floor. Little beans. I'm good with that. Words are hard. Can you guys see your tokens? I can see my token. Does um, everybody have vision? Yep. Okay. I mean, not a lot of it, but yeah. Um, so. I am, so just to save some time, um, because I am running really late and I apologize, um, this set of staircases right here it ha is another set of that is collapsed, so you can't go down this set of staircases. Um, there is a set of stairs over here. There's another set on the other side. Um, and yeah. I believe by virtue of the um, by virtue of the blueprint, we want to go all the way to this other staircase. I got a Not six looking for a ghost door on this floor. Both of them are going to lead you to the ground floor. Um, this set of staircases, according to the blueprint, should go all the way down to the basement. Um, yes. For your ghost door, you do not see one on this floor, but you do maybe see a flicker of what could be one on the floor below you. Perfect. Um, you do hear um, footsteps coming up the stairs. Uh, are any of these doors unlocked? Oh, this door's are unlocked. Let's get in here quick. Um, if, if I could make a suggestion. Go down to the ne next one and then go in there. Okay. Yeah, I, I would I say I don't know if that was a DM or a ghost, but I, we're, we're gonna follow it. <laughs> we're gonna say it was a the ghost. ghost. The ghost gives you suggestions. Um, Send your mouse. You, Send well, your she mouse. is attuned, so Where's that does make the, sense. I don't know where we're going. Just, yeah. This door here. I collide, I collided with the wall, so there you go. Uh, yeah, if you want to send your your mice in this direction, this is where you hear the footsteps. Um, you can feel uh, free to. In this room, there is a hole in the floor that leads down to the ground floor. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'll send my mice out. That's fine. Okay. Um. Uh... You can uh, roll if you want to. I'm not going to make you roll. Um, it is going to cause the distraction that you want. Um, if you want to roll, we can see what kind of distraction. Um, but it is up to you. Nope, I'm good. Um, okay. Distraction's what I wanted. The other okay. the other distraction is skull fire in their nostrils, and that's up close and okay. personal. And I just uh, want to get out. <laughs> I'm going to say the mice came over to the other side of the, the the floor, and they went ran up the stairs and went to the other side of the room. Are you guys going down the hole? Yes. Might as well. Okay. And since prowess is not my best, I am going to say I brought some climbing gear. Uh, what does That's my fine. line thrower do? I mean, it we... makes noise. That, that's the problem. Uh, we did not do loadouts, so I'm just going to say because we're running so late, you can have whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it's on your character sheet and you want to have it, you can have it. Alright, so yes, I'm in well, here. I'm going to move quickly and not wait for anybody because I feel like this is a desperate a desperate moment. Yes. So down I need I go. to get out of here and I need to survive ah. so that I can pour over this book and find out where the items are so that Hey, I did it. I just okay. jumped down. Uh well, let by me desperate move roll. your token down here. I don't I don't really know what I'm doing right now. Um Does it does it look far down? I I I have it's no just judgment. Just one floor. It's just one oh. floor. Yeah, it doesn't. I, it doesn't seem to require climbing gear. I mean, you could just drop down if you want. Yeah, if I plan to drop down, I won't do as much damage to myself. That's fine. I have a rubberized coat on. That'll absorb from it. It is. Um, let me actually tell you. What number? That is thirty-three. 
I actually have the whole, I laid out the whole mansion, so I know exactly what's in every single room. Um, nice. The ground floor is... Um, so in that room that you drop down on, it's an office, so you are able to drop down onto the desk. Um, oh, perfect. Uh, quick... Uh, which one? Uh, quick... Quick study. I know we're trying to exit, but um, there the is one? on the the table there is um, some rough sketches of what looks to be a hole, like a hole like design. And a hole is essentially like you take somebody's spirit and you kind of spark craft together a body and shove the spirit inside of it. Great, mm -hmm. taking it and going. Okay. Um. All right. So. The front and the back door have been locked the same way the upstairs room is. There is a door here that leads down to the basement. Uh, but there are two other people out here. Um, There's a ghost door on this level. Right? Where, where there is a ghost people? door. Where's that ghost they are door? down over there by the stairs. Um, because, and I apologize to you guys um, because we are running out of time. Um, the ghost door is over here. We can't see that much. Oh yeah, which uh, uh, there you go. so I have over where the volatile skull fire. I don't suppose I can just throw that, right? That's um, probably a bad idea. You can, um, but hopefully you roll really well because if you fumble that, you can you will drop it on yourself. Well, I haven't used yeah, my throw copper. It, throw it from over there. From over there. <laughs> you don't get anybody else. I, I don't know where out the ghost Okay. While you're doing that, um, but there's so many things happening right now. Oh yeah, throw it at those I, people. That that was the plan. I wasn't gonna throw it at me. I'm. That's why I brought the skull fire to throw at people. So that's what am I? How am I throwing? I don't. I don't really know what's going on. Vanessa, um, is Vanessa throwing? It's dexterous manipulation. You know what? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, it is risky. That's fine. And limited. Uh, you could I also you could also wreck if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, my finesse is better your, than my wreck. If you're yeah. using your copper, I think that goes up. I would one, increase so it to standard. Be, yeah. The standard, yeah. yeah. Um. Well. No guts, no glory. Hey. You. So you don't hit yourself. You manage to get it to about here. You don't actually hit either of them, but you get it close enough that it causes a big enough distraction that they are not really paying attention to where you guys are right now. Great. Love that journey. Um, for Does the ghost door, anybody that's going through the ghost door is going to take some stress. Not that it really matters right yeah. now, <laughs> but everybody's going to take two stress for going through. Except, I'm going to say everybody except for Silvertongue. Silvertongue, you're only going to take one because you are used to this sort of thing. Mm. So um, I don't need to roll that's... to like open the ghost door. No, I'm not gonna make you roll okay. right now. I'll take stress. That's I'm fine stress. because simul yeah. simultaneously, this is going to satisfy my vice. So, what's your vice? Weird. Oh, hey, so it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> my vice is also weird. Wow. Weird. Wow. Weird I'm the bunch. only one who took something different. Yeah. Okay, None I'm, of us talked about that either. So I'm just gonna roll a tune to see what it would have been if I if you had made me roll. Ah, okay, cool. Success. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, yeah. There really wasn't any time for combat in this one. Um but you guys are able to escape. Um if you are curious as to what happened, there is actually like a whole story that I planned. I went down a rabbit hole. Um, there's a whole thing with Skurlock and what he was doing. There's a whole thing with the person who hired, like there's just I went down way too many rabbit holes for this um so if anybody's interested we can always play this out in a longer campaign maybe um, not that. at three in the morning definitely maybe not at three, three in the morning, morning. <laughs> <laughs> a different time it might be um, something great for the alternia archive oh yes maybe. or a patreon exclusive or a or patreon, patreon exclusive. exclusive um so i'm gonna say this is your last chance to get in Entries? Sorry, it's late. My brain is fried. Yes, um, entries. 
thank you for my play to my players for hanging out with me and going through this. I'm so sorry that it took so long and we had to rush through the end of it. I was really looking forward to the whole getting through the the mansion thing. Um, yeah, no, we definitely need to do this as a longer one. Yeah, sometime. yeah. Ne- uh, next time I'll bring my 13 dead end drive and we can mock it out with like actual like 13 dead end drive style traps. Nice. And that I had <laughs> traps. There were actually traps all throughout the mansion. I just didn't have time to do anything with them. So. Um, okay, we can go ahead and pick the winner. Unless you message me is and he, I... Is it me? Am I the drama? Is me? Ah! Peslon is the winner. Congratulations. I will get Good with Tom. you. So you can have these dice. Um, Happy belated birthday, because technically in my time zone, it's still kind of your birthday, but not really. <laughs> 15 minutes past. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pretty good so, for me, actually. Um... We are going to go ahead and end this stream so we can start up the next one with Ava, who is doing a fun cyberpunk game. Oh, um, I this, Ava. You're a yeah. trooper. I yeah, took the Australian you. time slot because things came up and they could no longer do it. So I was like, well, I'm free. I'm not running anything yet. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me in the chat. Last year. It is. You and I, we, we did the same thing last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, last year we did the Australian time slot with the with the uh, Santa Claus run, and then you did the one. Oh, after. that's right. Yeah, you did. Mm, I went mm. to bed. Uh, yeah, thanks for staying up late, everybody. Thanks to my players for playing with me. I hope you guys had a really good time. Um, yeah. I love the and system. Stick around 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. We'll be up with Cyber Plus Punk. Yep. Cyber Plus Punk. Yep. That is what it's called. That is a thing. <laughs>